So the first time that I did this hair, um, I did post it to TikTok and my first pause, I basically stopped like this and I was like, I look like a poodle. And this lady commented, your hair is too frizzy. You need to use a pomade and don't brush it. And I was just sitting there like, do you, do you know what I'm trying to accomplish? Because there's no way you can accomplish a vintage hairstyle without brushing it. But also I did use a pomade. I showed using a pomade in that video. Hello my friends and welcome back to The Air Effect. If you are new, my name is Christina and I run this channel because I like old books, I like vintage clothes, and I want to live a practical vintage lifestyle. So this is another video for my 1950s Housewife series. If you do not know what that is, there is a playlist link down below where you can watch. Today I wanted to tackle setting your hair. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to do this hair, which I have found is actually a lot easier than I expected. I am one of those people who doesn't like to spend a lot of time and effort on my hair. The less work that I have to do, the better, but I've also always, always wanted a really nice polished vintage hairstyle, so I have been doing a lot of trial and error lately. In the last few months, I have tried everything from pillow rollers to pin curls to curlers to the headband technique, I have tried Lotta Body, I have tried flaxseed lotion, I have tried just setting with water, I have tried Motions Foaming Wrap, I have tried a lot of different suggestions for what works for vintage hair. I am going to share with you my favorite hair setting technique, which happens to be a 1940s and 1950s accurate way to do your hair, as are quite a few of those other ones, but this is my personal favorite because it's cheap, it's quick, and I don't have to do a whole lot in order to get this hair. So without further ado, let's get into my favorite hair styling technique, which is setting your hair with beer. So, the only tools that you're going to need for this are a bunch of bobby pins, a brush, and flat beer, which will take a little bit of preparation. I have a dollar store spray bottle and I put flat beer in it and I keep it in the fridge. And of course you're going to want to brush out your hair, just give it a quick once over. The other thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have a nice straight part. In all of my vintage books it says to make sure you have a razor straight part, so always make sure. So what I like to do is kind of back here, divide my hair into two, and just section this away for later. Um, I'm going to come kind of right behind my ear and part it down there so that it's parted like that and I'm gonna clip this away for later and that way I can just focus on this front bit first and it kind of helps feel a little less overwhelming so the first thing that I'm going to do is my bangs so I guess that's one more little section here and I just spray it lightly so that it is all more or less damp. This, I wouldn't suggest, this is not the best <laughs> method of spraying um, because it, it doesn't spray finely. It's a more heavy duty spray bottle. So what I would suggest is actually getting, if you have an old hair care spray bottle, like for, um, heat protection spray. I used to have an old Tresemme heat protection spray bottle and that's what I would use. Uh, that was the perfect spray bottle. The one thing I want to make sure is that the ends are soaked, not soaked, saturated. So then I'm taking it, let's see, and I'm going to wrap it around my thumb. Just wrap the end around my thumb and roll this towards my head. These ones, I set standing up. So um, I will put a pin through them just like that so that there's a little bit of volume when they're undone. And I also set them with two pins so that they stay. When you're spraying your hair, you don't want to soak it. You mainly want it to be damp, but not soaking wet. You can actually. 
Um, if you do it super soaking wet, you will have to wait probably a full 24 hours for it to become dry. That will probably ensure you a much longer lasting curl. Um, but I don't have the time or the patience <laughs> to uh, do that. So I just do slightly damp hair, kind of make sure each section is generally damp. Um, and I, I try to take smaller sections. This is kind of a funky part of my hair because I have slight layers and so it's just a little bit awkward, but all of these, t these um, bang sections I'm putting in two pins and I'm crossing the pins over each other. Most people know this trick, but I'll put in one pin and then I'll put the other one in like this so that they really stay well. So with this little side section, I'm going to do probably four pieces and these I will curl downward and just lay flat and I'm only going to secure them with one pin. So while I'm doing this, let me answer some of the questions I have got. It has been a long time since I've um, updated, I guess, on my hair setting routine because I was doing my hair setting pretty often and then I kind of stopped. Um, I was trying different methods. I was, for a long time I used um, Motions Foaming Wrap, but I just found that it left too much residue and it made me shed little white bits and I didn't like that. So I did that for a while, kind of stopped because I wasn't happy with it and my hair got to an awkward stage. And then I had a bunch of really bad sets. Real quick, before I continue the story, I, because this is like the whole back of my head, I am going to kind of just focus on this section first. But yeah, I just went through, I feel like quite a while of being really frustrated with the way my hair was setting. I was also just kind of tired and I grew my hair out for a while. And the longer your hair is, of course, the more time consuming it is. But I think that this is my be my favorite way to set my hair. I think this is finally kind of the way that works the best for me. You have to learn what haircut you want uh, for your face shape. I know a lot of people really like the midi cut um, and I know that that works really, really well. I do not have that level of commitment because I absolutely have nights when I don't want to set my hair. I just don't have the patience to have a midi cut so you know it's a it's not a haircut that looks good when it's not set. So I don't I, I don't want a haircut that I can't wear with my natural hair texture. Um, you have to figure out, yeah, what haircut you want. If you want shorter layers in the front, I think that's something that a lot of people get frustrated with is the fact that if you don't have shorter layers in the front, especially like if you want a good swoop in the front, you have to have um, you know, at least chin length layers. So my hair, oh, I totally forgot to show you. You kind of saw it when I brushed it out. It is a U shape, kind of. It is, um, it's, it's curved in the front around my face. It's kind of straight around the back. I cut it myself because I didn't, once again, I just, I am, Honestly, very low-key, lazy, impatient when it comes to hair. So I want to do hairstyles that don't take a lot of time. So this will probably last me four or five days. I am not following any special pattern when I'm curling my hair. I am literally just curling it all downward and setting it flat against my head. All right, half my hair is done. Once again, I'm going to separate my hair kind of down to the ear and put this away. Hair setting, there is no one magic formula that works for everyone. You, you have to 
play around with it and figure out what's going to work best with your own hair and your own desired lifestyle with your hair. I would, yeah, highly suggest just trying a water set so you can figure out um, how much hair you need to put into each curl, what uh, curling tools work best for you. If you can stand sleeping on pin curls, I know they're not the most comfortable, if you can stand it, start there. It's the cheapest way to curl your hair. You get some water, which is <laughs> generally free. Uh, you don't even need a spray bottle, you can just dampen your hair. I used to get my brush wet, brush it through my hair and dampen it that way. Uh, that's where I suggest starting uh, to figure out if that's going to work for you. And then if you want something more heavy duty, you can start testing out the different products. There is Motions Foaming Wrap, there's Lotta Body. You can make flaxseed gel where you take about a tablespoon of flaxseed and you boil it. Um, and it turns into a gel. This is by far my favorite method. I know that it sounds funny, but one thing that I learned is that, um, especially for thin hair, this can be helpful because wheat protein swells your hair and gives you more volume. Um, this was a vintage hack in the 1940s, likely born out of waste not want not, and just like kind of vin vinegar rinsing. Um, it's just one of those things where it's relatively inexpensive. I, <laughs> my husband drinks beer, so I just use the leftovers from his cans because he is prone to leaving his beer out for too long and then it gets warm and then he doesn't want to drink it. So I use it for my hair. The sugars in the beer act kind of like a very mild hairspray. So they help, it helps your hair to, um, set better because it's kind of like a very very light hairspray and leaving it out overnight is uh, leaving it out to get flat is necessary because it will help the alcohol evaporate and it will be less damaging if you're worried about using an alcohol in your hair honestly using this method I've only ever noticed that my hair is super bouncy and moldable and shiny and full so I don't imagine using it once a week to set your hair is going to do much damage not like using an everyday alcohol on your hair would so I was going to answer some of the questions I have gotten about this over the years because the last time I did this was about four three or four years ago three years ago maybe and um, I had to do a secondary video talking about the questions I had gotten on setting your hair with beer because people were really confused. So the first question, the first and foremost biggest question I always get is does it smell? Um, and no, the smell does not stay. You will obviously smell the beer when you're spraying it on your hair. Uh, but the smell dissipates pretty quickly and in the morning your hair will just smell like your shampoo or whatever your hair smelled like before. There is no lingering smell of beer whatsoever which is really really nice my hair is clean so generally i would try to set it um the day that i wash it or the day after just to give it time to dry it is all set now as you can see here's what it looks like let me turn around so you can see the back so that is the set i leave it in overnight and I don't use this, I'm not using a special setting pattern. So I use these big giant, this is like a three, three or four foot uh, wide scarf. Um, these are, it's, it's better if you can find one that's not shiny, but this is just what I have close to me. Um, so I'll fold it in a triangle and much like my headscarf video, I'm just gonna put back Kind of like this and tie it up. Nothing special. I do tie it behind my uh, front curls. This is not for any particular reason other than I have a short forehead and I, if I tie it in front of these front curls, it will just eat my face. Um, I have seen mm, a lot of, if not most, vintage hair people tie it in front of and over all of the curls and I have tried to do that 
and it just it just eats my face because I have a short forehead um, but then I will just pin it here so that it doesn't go anywhere I think I'm gonna stick one in the back too because this is a very slippery scarf I'll maybe cross them right here just to keep it down and there we go now I am done <laughs> with my nighttime setting process good morning it is not morning I ended up leaving my hair until now it is almost two o'clock in the afternoon because I was editing all morning and taking care of the kids and I just didn't have the time so we are finally going to take out the <laughs> this hair stuff um, let's see how these curls have fared I am preparing to film another video so I'm hoping that they did well I think these curls are gonna be good. Let's get them out of my hair. Exactly what I wanted. Um, this is actually better than the last time. I'm gonna just flurf my hair a little bit. Uh, get it all out there. And then we just start brushing. We've caught one rogue, but there's always one. I think it'll be fine once I start brushing. Um, it's just kind of being whatever it's being. So, we're gonna start brushing. I'm gonna start out with this one. Um, I am, well, I'm gonna break it up a little bit with my hands just so that I'm not going over, over any potentially crusty ends, although I don't feel any crusty ends. That's the other thing that I really like about the beer method is that I don't have crusty hair. I noticed most products that I used before I started using beer um, I would have crusty, crispy ends from the product, and I don't have that with beer, so that is really, really nice. start kind of brushing the hair over my hand because a lot of people will get to hair and just get afraid because you've got a lot of fluff going on uh, but that's good it's good it's good to have fluff you need it to go through this phase before it moves on to a smoother phase ouch so one of the biggest tricks that I can tell you in order to get that nice smooth curl that you want is to brush things around your thumb or your palm or whatever part of your hand. So I'm going to start over here and tell you what I mean. I want it to curl around towards my face and we're doing kind of a page boy style. So I am going to brush it around my hand like that. This especially um, so when it sits, it's actually going to be pinned like right here, but when it sits, I'm trying to get that to curl, to curve, more or less. Now, one thing I will confess, I don't know when to add pomade. I don't know if you're supposed to add it now, if you should add it later, if you should add it right before you hairspray. I don't know. I just add it when I feel like it should be added. So, um, <laughs> confessions of a person who's never really used pomade, I really like this shape that it's taking right here so I'm gonna just continue to brush up and around I'm not really trying to smooth the ends so much as get this portion to just nicely curve because the ends will be basically invisible um, whoo this is looking pretty I like it so I'm gonna pin this side 
I don't really try to hide my pins because I don't care very much. But you can if you want to. And that is essentially what I'm going for right there. Um, I am going to add pomade at this point. So I am using the Apothecary LBCC. They are on Etsy. I will link this down below. Their, their shop is closed. Uh, actually, it won't be closed by the time this video comes out. But um, this is a authentic 1922 pomade. Um, so it's, it smells really good. It smells like lavender. And I am just basically getting a little bit on my hands and running it over my hair. Um, I was really afraid to use pomade at first because I wasn't really sure what it did, but it does just really help smooth everything. Okay, so I've got a little bit of pomade. I don't want to get too much because I know that can weigh down your hair. I've got a few stragglers coming out. All right, and I'm going to continue just brushing it around my hand till it looks how I want it to look. This little guy right here. One of the things I think I I cut my hair myself and I think that I might have actually I really like that. I think I might have cut it a little too short on one side. Um, that is where I want it to be so I'm gonna try and leave it and just go around the back. In the back I'm just brushing over my hand and big confession I don't pay as much attention to the back because I cannot see it but I do, oof, that doesn't feel right. I do it mainly by how it feels, so I know it's not going to be perfect, but it's gonna be something. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know how the back looks. I don't really care too much. So, moving on to the main. The main attraction. I should probably ensure that I'm still focused. So I am going to actually section off this shorter portion of my hair right here and kind of just clip it away for the moment because I don't need it. And then I'm going to work on getting all of this to just do the thing, you know? I know that it's kind of scary to just brush and brush and brush, but I promise you. All right, that's good enough until I hairspray it. For the front, I'm going to hairspray right there, and then I'm going to start teasing it. Now, I know that some people will actually tease all of their hair before they do the vintage set. I have seen some of the pros like um, Miss Victory Violet and she's a hairstylist so she ab absolutely knows what she's doing but I do not <laughs> because I don't want to. I am also going to, oh I love this. This is great. I'm going to add some clips here and there to encourage it to be dented where I want it to be dented. There we go. So I've got it kind of where I want those clips to be. And then we're going to play with this. Now for this brushing I am going to focus on the ends because I don't want to brush out too much of the volume I just made myself. Main concern is getting these ends where I want them to be. And this is the struggle of um, I don't want the front of my hair to be a big old lump of all the same hair but at the same time I 
also want it to meld a little bit. just at this point utilizing my hands to shape the shape it how I want it to be really close to my face over here. And I'm sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing, can you? I'm, I'm experimenting still. Um, I don't like that this is so in my face, so I'm going to push a pin in right here. And, I mean, you can you can absolutely see that, can't you? Yes, probably, but I'm just going to do that. Spray the heck out of everything. <clears throat> and I'm going to let this just sit while I get dressed. Uh, and I will be back to show you the results. <laughs> A lot it's a little different from the first time that I did this so that is the gist of setting your hair in a vintage style this is a 1940s page boy hairstyle if you want to look it up um, that's what this style would be called I think they did hair similar to this in the 50s but shorter um, as the years went on it got shorter you know the 40s was a little bit longer and more glamorous the 50s was getting shorter as housewives were working hard in their homes and they wanted more convenience. I want to really encourage you, if you are a hairstyle beginner, to not give up, even if it takes you a few tries to get it. Um, this kind of hairstyle is something that I have wanted for a very long time, at least five years if not more. I have done vintage hairstyling videos in the past and always wishing that I knew how to do this hair, getting different hairstyles, um, being happy with most of it, but I just never quite knew how to manipulate my hair to do this. Uh, you have to keep in mind that your haircut really matters. But yeah, don't give up, even if your first five tries are sort of failures if it doesn't turn out the way that you want it to. It's gonna take a lot of trial and error, it's never gonna be exactly perfect, but the more that you do it, the better it will get, the easier it will get, the quicker it will get. I would highly recommend testing out different methods before you give up on your curly hair forever. And I also want to say, I have seen a lot of comments from people bemoaning the fact that their hair does not hold curl like mine does. My hair does not hold a curl. If I were to curl my hair with a curling iron and try to do this, it wouldn't work. It doesn't hold. My hair does not like heat styling. Um, overnight curling methods are the only thing that keeps my hair curled and the knowledge of how my particular hair responds to different curling methods. Just keep trying, experiment with hairstyles, hair curling methods. There are a lot out there that you can find that are heatless overnight hair curling methods. Just find one that works for you and your lifestyle and just practice. Practice makes perfect, as they say. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this was helpful to you and encouraging to you. Thank you for joining me in this 1950s Housewife series. If you want to see more, there's a playlist linked down below where I will have every single video that I'm going to do for this 1950s Housewife series. Um, and I hope that you enjoy them. Don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you like my vibe. I hope that wherever you are, you are feeling safe and loved. And until I see you again, have a beautiful day and thank you for watching. Bye.